Welcome to r slash nuclear revenge where this homophobic man's relationship gets destroyed in just one sentence A homophobe insulted my daughter. I may have ended his marriage So my 15 year old daughter has been friends with a girl who lives opposite for years now And in the past there have been sleepovers at both our houses Adults always stopped and chatted when we saw each other, etc Last year, my daughter came out as a lesbian and a short while later, we noticed that our friends across the road never seemed to want to chat anymore. Recently, my daughter told me her friend had messaged her to say that she wasn't allowed around our house. Yesterday, I saw them on the road and I decided I was going to have a friendly chat and see if I could resolve the issue. It didn't stay friendly for long. The idiot dad was acting oddly agitated when I brought it up and ended up saying, I'm not letting your freaking queer daughter try and do stuff to mine. Just because you raised a freak doesn't mean we all have to like it. Now, a little side note for anyone who doesn't know. Although the term queer has been somewhat reclaimed by the LGBTQ plus community in recent years, it has a long history of being used as a homophobic slur. And this idiot dad definitely wasn't using it as an ally. Now, for the next part, it's important to know four things. First off, This dad has been working from home since the pandemic started. Second, his wife hasn't and works each day. Third, I've been working from home due to injury for a few weeks now. And fourth, I've seen the woman who visits for a few hours a couple of times a week and I've seen him smack her butt as she leaves. I stay nice and calm. I take a breath and then I press the button. I calmly explain to this idiot dad that just because my daughter is gay doesn't mean that she would be trying to make a move on a friend. After all, I say, men and women can be friends without it being sexual, just like you and the blonde girl who keeps coming round. He got pretty mad and called me some amazing names as his wife stomped back to their house. I'm guessing things got pretty bad as he left the house less than an hour later with a suitcase and a big gym bag and drove off tire screeching. I do feel sorry for the daughter if I'm honest. And if only for her, I did wish afterwards that I'd kept my mouth shut. I'm not sorry for him though. Yeah, it's a very strange mentality for this idiot dad to have. Just because your daughter is friends with a girl who's a lesbian doesn't mean she's gonna try and kiss her or anything, you know? It's just weird. I do absolutely love the way that you phrase this OOP. Just so innocent. But he knows exactly what you're getting at. It's brilliant. As does his wife who's right there and just like, oh, can you imagine that reaction? So good. So impactful. Just saying such an innocent line beautiful stuff it really is lovely revenge i've got to say normally we do see nuclear revenge stories that are pretty long you know paragraphs and paragraphs they require a lot of backstory a lot of setup and the revenge itself can sometimes be pretty complicated and intricate but this was just beautifully succinct and short and i loved every second of it because it was just so simple one sentence to ruin a relationship it's brilliant it really is and by the way it's very much deserved do not feel sorry yeah for the daughter sure but not for this man now moving on to our next revenge story keep kicking myself and other students off our remote desktop link for the heck of it enjoy the consequences so this happened last october in 2020 and i feel it's finally safe to share it given the situation at that time going to campus was a no-go so everything was online as such a lot of programs used for coursework which were only on pc needed a remote link for those of us on Macs or other devices. This link connects students to assigned desktops physically on campus through an application like Citrix. It would only allow students onto the desktops when another class was not remotely using that lab at the time and at night when registered classes were done. The on-campus computers would show that their drives were in use, so the students who lived on campus would know that someone was remotely accessing it. Okay, seems pretty logical. I guess just using the campus computers remotely means that no one else can physically use those computers if they're in the lab. Anyway, I was taking a course in remote sensing, which required access to programs such as ArcMap, ArcGIS, R and Erdus. You can look them up. I'm not going to anyway. They were only available on PC. So I, as a MacBook user, needed to use the remote link. The issue started at the start of October when I was working on an assignment in ArcMap. I was really startled when I was suddenly kicked out and then furious because I hadn't had the chance to save my latest inputs. 
I then went back to the web page, re-inputted my student credentials and logged in to a different desktop. Not two minutes later, I was logged out again. Rightly annoyed, I emailed the professor and TAs about it and moved on to other homework. I figured that it was a bug that would soon be fixed. But no, it continued throughout the entire freaking month. I ended up having to work on my remote labs between 9 p.m. and 2 a.m. as I literally wasn't able to work during the day without being kicked off. It was really annoying, especially since I couldn't even work during my assigned lab time. Other students started reporting this, and we'd get a lot of emails from IT. Updates, patches, and things like that we had to install to try and patch this bug. And nothing worked. It was painful. I decided that enough was enough, and took a train to campus after my online morning classes. If it was going to keep booting me off the remotes, then I'd just go in person. I completed the online health check, got to campus no problem and made my way to the building that housed all the pcs yes we have a building that houses all the pcs for computer classes anyways i went up and towards the lab that my credentials were registered to i'm gonna be honest i wasn't expecting what i saw but i sure was dang fuming through the windows into the lab i saw two guys going from pc to pc logging students off at first i couldn't believe it And then I got furious. They were laughing about screwing with hardworking students. I'm going to call them dumb and dumber. That's when I decided to get some payback. I pulled out my phone and placed it beside the window. And it was partially hidden by the trash bin inside the classroom. Recording them and what they were doing. They didn't notice me, thank God. And I got onto my laptop, remote linking to my phone. I then got onto the university social media page and started to live stream the video from my phone. I put a title along the lines of found the bugs kicking students off remote desktop video has been deleted and i'll explain soon it didn't take long for fellow students to take notice of it and it went viral within 30 minutes names were soon put out as dumb and dumber were recognized and there was a lot of hate in the comments even campus police replied asking for the location of course i was all too happy to give it it was then that i saw on the stream that dumb pulled out his phone and started freaking out he'd noticed the stream and that it was live i quickly rushed to grab my phone and retreat and that's when dumber rushed out the door and friggin tackled me we started brawling it was self-defense as he kept attacking me to grab my phone and then i saw dumb going for my laptop which was hosting the stream, which was still being recorded from my phone. So I kicked Dumber between the legs while elbowing him in the neck before jumping dumb. To be honest, I don't really know what happened next, but I do remember campus police having to pull me off dumb. Apparently, I'd full body tackled him away from my laptop and he punched me in the face. Apparently, I grabbed his carry-on bag, bashed him over the head with it, and accidentally cracked his laptop. Oops. So anyways, the fight was broken up and we were all taken down to the campus police office. To make a very long story short, I got a relative slap on the wrist for my part of it. Had to do some on-campus community service, but my record was kept clean, thankfully. I was not charged for the fights or the laptop as I was able to prove self-defense and that they hit me first and tried to destroy my property intentionally, which made it a lot worse for them. I was let off on the laptop for a technicality, as I was punched in the face and had no idea that he even had a laptop in his carry-on. Phew. As for Dumb and Dumber, I was called in to testify at each of their hearings in December. It turns out, kicking students off remote links was considered a very grave academic offense, as it was intentional tampering with others' work. The video stream I took was a big part of the evidence against them, and CCTV proved that they had been doing it for weeks. In almost all the computer labs, they'd intentionally messed with over a 100 students. Adding to attacking me, I had a nice shiner for a month, and my devices, instead of just running, they got into pretty hot water. Now, the reason that this wasn't discovered sooner was due to the fact that this remote link was new to us and IT was still working through the bugs. I don't know exactly what happened next, as they just needed me to come in, masked, and tell what I did and remembered. However, I did get a notification in my email in March of this year that two students were expelled for intentional tampering of other students' work. Can you guess who? Yep. Dumb and Dumber got the boot for their dumb actions. It gets even better though. 
Turns out they were here on student visas, which meant that not only were they expelled from the university with a black mark on their records, they were also given the boot from the country and most definitely back to their very disappointed parents. Maybe it's karma, but they got publicly exposed on a live stream for their actions for all the school to see, which was taken down due to it needing to be evidence against them all. But yep, they are expelled twice for their dumb actions and with their names in campus infamy for their stunts. Hope they've learned their lesson. A little addition here from OP. Wanted to add that they were actually put on a cargo flight home as their country wasn't allowing passenger flights during COVID. They had to go because without their visas, they were in the country illegally, which would land them in even deeper hot water. The university actually took mercy on them and paid for the flights, and I agree. They may have acted stupid, but that's no reason to have to deal with border security or whatnot. I only know this because I ran into and was able to talk with one of the campus officers who told me what happened when I went in person for a lab this recent September. So yeah, those guys had to take a cargo flight home. I think the uncomfortable experience they would have had was enough of a punishment compared to being in lockup until their country's borders opened or until other arrangements could be made. Wow, what a story. Not only were these two idiots expelled from the university, but they were also exiled on a cargo plane. How embarrassing is that? It's just beautiful. It really is. Just like the first story, excellent stuff. I don't really get the motive behind what they were doing. I don't even think it's that funny. Like, yeah, pranks and stuff are good. I get that. And they can be fun. Even if you're annoying someone, I'm going to hold my hands up and say they can be fun. However, this, like, this is not really that good, is it? Oh, how funny is that? Stopping another student from being able to work. Where's the satisfaction now? I don't get it personally. And by the way, I love a joke. I really do. This one I just don't even get. What are you getting from doing this? Surely nothing. Also, adding on to the fact that these guys knew they were on student visas, right? How dumb is that? You know that if you get in massive trouble for doing this, which you obviously would, don't even need to assault people to know that you're going to get in massive trouble for stopping hundreds of students from doing work. There's a very high chance you're going to be sent home. It's so weird, but great revenge. Can you imagine, by the way, the look on this guy's face? Going around, logging students off of these computers, gets a little notification on their phone. Oh, someone's gone live streaming. Let's have a little watch of that. Have a break. From logging people off their computers what's this it's me it's the back of my head anyway guys that is going to do it for this episode of r slash nuclear revenge really hope you enjoyed it in my personal opinion these two stories were great if you do want to see some more revenge stories from me right away the other day i uploaded a full r slash pro revenge movie check it out right here over two hours worth of fantastic revenge content this extra long episode has some of the very best stories from the entirety of this year so if you want to check it out be my guest click it if you're new to the channel subscribe and i'll see you all tomorrow with a brand new video